Good morning. I hope. <laughs> I don't know what that was. But <laughs> it, it's going to be a weird video today, so I apologize. Um, as you can probably hear, my cold is still, still with me. Um, I'm feeling better. <clears throat> so sorry, excuse me. I'm feeling better. I sound worse <laughs> and I look even worse. So the video that I had planned for today is getting bumped back and I figured we could spend some time coloring. We haven't done that in a very long time. So I pulled out the Art of Coloring Disney Animals 100 Images to Inspire Creativity and Relaxation. I do love these books, and I haven't touched them since the last video I did on here, so I've really been missing that. And I picked out, I thought, a fun picture for us to do work on today. It says, Disney animals, a mouse who captains a steamboat, a fawn who becomes the prince of a forest, a lion cub who befriends a meerkat and a warthog. From the very beginning, animals and various creatures have played the roles of either beloved protagonists, supporting characters, or villains in the vast majority of Disney animated films. Whether big and small, domestic and mythical, or dramatic and comical, a vast kingdom of animals and creatures has figured into Disney storytelling, from the tiniest playful hummingbird to the most fearsome and magical dragon. While many of these character, creature characters can talk and even sing, their animation is rooted in reality, as Disney animators have long studied live animals for reference. The result is that the characters are believable and relatable at the same time. <laughs> My cat has found uh, a shopping bag. We laugh when amphibious Tiana and Naveen get their long fly-catching tongues knotted together, we cry when the imprisoned Mrs. Jumbo cradles baby Dumbo in her trunk. This coloring book plays tribute to the long-standing tradition of animals and creatures in Disney films and includes some of the most iconic characters in animation history. Featured within are Pongo, Perdita, and their puppies from 101 Dalmatians, Baloo, Bagheera, King Louie, and Shere Khan from The Jungle Book, Duchess, O'Malley, and Kittens, Marie, Rear Louise, and Toulouse from the Aristocats, Mufasa, Simba, Timon, Pumbaa, Rafiki, and Scar from the Lion King, and many more of our furry and feathered friends. There is a section devoted to legendary and fantastical creatures, such as Beast from Beauty and the Beast, Maleficent's Dragon, Incarnation from the Sleeping Beauty, and Ursula, the Sea Witch from the Little Mermaid. And for fans of Disney's leading ladies, there is a chapter featuring Snow White with her furry friends. Her furry, nope. With, of Snow White with her forest friends. Merida with her Clydesdale, Angus. Jasmine with her tiger, Raja. And Ariel with Flounder and Sebastian. Uh, spoiler alert, that's what we're going to work on today. Unlike coloring books geared toward children, this book contains black and white artwork that is incredibly intricate, detailed, and whimsical, and because coloring is a task that requires focus and creativity, it allows grown-ups to ignore the internal chatter and find quiet, exercising parts of their brains that aren't typically used on a day-to-day -day basis. Coloring has been shown to promote overall an overall sense of relaxation, wellness, and positivity, and the images themselves, depicting scenes from Disney movies of our childhood, remind us of simpler times when we had less stress and could spend hours in the world of imagination. You do not have to be Van Gogh or Picasso to enjoy this book. You don't even have to know that mixing red and blue makes purple. All you need is a love of Disney animals and creatures, a set of colored pencils or markers, and an adventurous spirit. Once you've finished coloring the scene of Lady and the Tramp eating their spaghetti dinner, you'll feel like a kid again, and you'll have a beautiful piece of artwork to hang proudly on the refrigerator. So speaking of colored pencils, yet again, I have my Prismacolor Premier 
coloring pencils. And as I've said before, this was a set of 72, but over time I've lost some, so it's a set of 65-ish, give or take. <laughs> um, to do a quick flip through of the book, though, this chapter is Our Animal Heroes. And we have Mrs. Jumbo. Okay, so this is a new day. I'm really sorry. I am still not feeling great, but... My computer has been giving me a lot of problems. So I'm just trying to piece together something <laughs> for today. Hopefully this will work. If not, I'm probably just not going to have a video for this week. And I would hate for that to happen. But, you know, there are worse things. But anyway, I still have yet to color in this. It's, it's really been a mess. But um, we have Raymond. Naveen and Tiana. Bambi. Sven. There's really just a lot of great characters in this book. Tramp and his son. So you get the point. So um, the one that I have picked out to work on is... The Little Mermaid, Flounder, and Sebastian. So I thought that would be a lot of fun. And I have my scrap paper here to work on with our colors. So while my computer is seemingly feeling generous, let's get started, shall we? Yay! Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the fun things about this cold is my ears are pretty much completely clogged. <laughs> so I'm hoping that the sound is okay on this. This is not going to be my best quality, but so be it. Uh, so I'm going to start off with flounder here, and this is the color canary yellow, and I think I might sharpen this because there are a lot of background um, on him that I want to color. There's a lot of, oh my gosh, you guys, the struggle bus is real. There's a lot of detail on him, and I want to color in the background first. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. We're going to struggle through this one, but we'll, we'll get there together, right? I hope y'all are having a good beginning of September. Aside from this cold, it's not been too bad so far for me. And I'm feeling a lot better. I just don't look great. <laughs> and I'm not sounding the best. And like I said, my ears are all clogged up. So once I get all that taken care of, we'll be back on track. I did want to take a second and thank everyone who has been subscribing and liking and leaving really nice comments. Um, all of that goes a really long way toward pushing this little channel out to the algorithm for YouTube. And there's been a lot of new people joining us lately, so welcome and thank you. I have a lot of fun things planned coming up um, in the near future. Like I said, this was not what I had planned to do for this week's video, but... Sometimes life has a way of saying, I see your plans, but you're not going to get those. You're going to have to uh, call an audible and change things. So that's okay. Next week, we'll be back with a new role play. I'm looking forward to that. Well, I hope next week we'll be back with a new role play. That's the plan. <laughs> so the dogs try to jump up on the couch. The puppy goes in tomorrow, actually, for his neuter surgery. So I know he'll be fine, but I won't be able to rest and 
be at peace until he's back home tomorrow afternoon. He is eight months old now and 60 pounds, so he's a big boy. try to do all of these little accent colors in varying shades of yellow because I know flounder's primary color is yellow. This one is sunburst yellow. That will work. He has blue stripes. So these will be different shades of blue right here. I think, I think his fins are blue too. I'll have to look that up. But I want it to be kind of like a, an at, an, at a glance. It looks like they're all the right colors or the, I don't want to say typical colors, normal colors. I, I don't want to say normal either. I don't know. They're given colors. In the movies and then if you look closer you'll see the patterns I mean they're fictional characters so there's really no right or wrong way to do it right <laughs> I don't know I feel I guess I feel kind of I have a bit of a stance on when people say something is normal or right it's like, what is normal? There's no normal of anything. There's no normal way to be, no normal way to do something or perceive something because everybody's different. No right or wrong way to be. Especially not when you're coloring. <laughs> As you know, I always say it, there are no mistakes in art. So just have fun with it and enjoy your time relaxing with it, you know? This one is lemony yellow. It's almost like a very, very, very pale yellow. Does anyone know what color his eyes are? Like the irises there? that much attention to it. I'm going to go back to the sunburst yellow. I'm still in these few little spots. do with his fins and his stripes in different colors of blue. This color is true blue. That looks pretty true to me. So let's color some of these in. I'm 
no rhyme or reason. By the time this video loads, the puppy will be back home and resting comfortably. But it's really been like on my mind today with him. He'll be fine though. Before I got involved with the job I have now, I worked with animal rescues and an animal hospital, so I uh, am a big advocate of spaying and neutering. So I'm, he's, he's definitely ready for it, but he's my baby, you know? <laughs> him one of those um <clears throat> excuse me we got him one of those inflatable collars that looks like a donut <laughs> so we'll see how he does with that I, I don't have a lot of confidence in it we'll probably have to end up going to my regular vet to pick up one of the plastic ones but if it does work that will be great um we used to have an older dog who passed away now, but he had to use one of those plastic collars when he was a baby and got neutered and man alive. He would use that thing with a battering ram. I think what I'm going to do is color his eyes in this true blue to kind of bring in the blue color here. I don't know what his eyes are in the movie, but in this book they're going to be blue. Our other dog used to just, <laughs> once he learned how to use that thing as a weapon, man, watch out. There was no getting away from him. He would move tables and everything with it. <laughs> It's almost the same color on here though, doesn't it? That's funny. There might be too many of these then. So by the time this video uploads, Labor Day here in the US will have come and gone. I hope everyone had a safe holiday. If you had the day off, I hope you enjoyed it. If you worked, thank you for working. I had the option to have it off. I could have worked it, but I have my daughter, so I took the day off and just had a good time with her. Last year over Labor Day, she was with her dad, so this year, she and I had a good time together. 
just messing around. Let's do... Also very similar. I want the light blue. It's very different. It's ultramarine. I think that's kind of a purple, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's the ultramarine. I think it's a little bit purple. I'll set this one to the side for just in case. Football has started back for those of you that watch. My team lost their opening game, but we usually start off kind of rough, and then as the season picks up, we do better. So it wasn't a big surprise. It's always disappointing, but <laughs> uh, that's okay. You know, it's just a game. We have a good time with it. But uh, hopefully, the season won't be a total wash. We'll see though. If you watch college football, I hope your team did well, unless you played us, in which case, good game, I guess. <laughs> I suppose that has to be sportsmanlike, right? No, that's okay. It's all in good fun. I live in the southern U.S. where college football is a big deal. I've been waiting all year for it to come back, so that surely did not help my voice at all, <laughs> yelling and screaming. I think I'll use that peacock blue to finish in this little area here. It looks a little bit purpley, but it's just enough of a difference, I think, that will it be noticeable, you know? In this small little amount.
really shade in the whites of his eyes because right now it just looks too stark. Let's give it a little bit of color. Just a little. There. So it doesn't look like it just forgotten to be colored in. And my older dog is over on his bed trying to scratch around. So I'm going to do his tongue. And this is crimson red. I think I'm going to want to do Sebastian and Ariel's tongue too. Because they look up. probably use this color again on Sebastian elsewhere. And I think I'll use different shades of gray in the interior of his eye here. Let's see. Oh no. I have a warm gray. Oh no. Okay. I thought the tip was broken on it. That's exactly the color I want to do. And some color all the uh, it was broken. <laughs> I'm not going to do that color. Alright. Try it. 70% cool gray. You guys, I can't even make this stuff up. Okay. I'm going to very lightly go under his tongue here. Okay, and I think that is flounder done. So I think next. Oh, excuse me. I think next we'll go in with Ariel's hair and then her tail or her fin, excuse me. Uh, let's see. I would like to do three or four different colors of red for her hair. We have magenta, crimson lake. Let's pull on the eyes here. Poppy red, that'll be a good color for her. And I think she has a little bit of orange, like a red orange in her hair. Carmine Red. Red Orange must have been one of the ones that I've lost along the way. I can't believe I said I wouldn't have one. Pale Vermilion. We'll look at that and see. Magenta may not work. I think magenta might be a little too purple. Here's the magenta. It's not bad. Again, I don't think there's a, a mistake here that he made. This is a nice kind of orange color. This is the poppy red. Pale vermilion. I think those colors are going to be too similar, so I'll put that one back. This one is Carmine Red. Let's keep them. And Crimson Lake. That one's too dark, I think. But it might be good for like some undertones, shading and things like that. I won't use that one a lot, though. I think I'll go mostly with mostly with this one. And I might bring in more of this crimson red. Put like a tip of the tongue. Because I think that one's really closest to the color in the movies. Maybe not though, I don't know. Maybe. We'll play around with it and see what we'll come up with, right? So 
going to do the majority of her hair in a puppy bag. I'm obviously not going to be able to finish this whole picture today, but I figure if we can kind of hit the big points. If y'all want to do some more on this one, we can, or if I can just finish this up in my own free time, that's fine too. No problem there. I'm sorry if you can hear it. My dog is all the way, my big dog, is all the way across the room snoring in his bed. There's one thing he's going to do, it's going to snore, that's for sure. So we have been taking our younger puppy up to stores here that sell like Halloween animatronics to try and get him used to the sounds and the sights of them because so we're hoping to take him trick-or-treating this year. Um, so we don't want to like have him not be used to those uh, and just kind of get scared, you know, when we're out. And so far, he's really been doing well. Um, we took him out the day before yesterday. And <laughs> there was one that was, it was a zombie, and it was randomly like screaming and jumping out. It was an animatronic. And he went, just went right up to it, started wagging his tail, and licked its hand. And I'm like, okay, I think he'll be okay. <laughs> but there's still plenty of time for us to continue taking him out and getting him used to that kind of stuff before we take him actually trick or treating this year. He's really a laid-back dog. I mean, there's not much that bothers him, but, you know, obviously the more we can get him used to it and out and about, the better off he'll be, so. I'm really looking forward to that. We have a cute, he's a black dog, so we have a cute little set of bat wings that just came in the mail uh, for him yesterday, I think. And I went ahead and put him on him, and he didn't care one bit. He was like, all right, this is fine. <laughs> So our, our idea is to have him go, part of his costume is as a bat, but nothing is going to be impeding his walk or his vision or anything like that. It's, it's all going to be removable accessories, so. And, you know, if he's fine with it now and then changes his mind the day of and doesn't want to go out, that's no big deal. We'll just leave him at home, but if he can, then that'll be a lot of fun to go out with him. And if he can't, that's okay, too going to kind of follow his lead on that. Or if he's fine with it this year or not next year, that's okay too. You know, no big deal. Definitely not something he has to do. Do you celebrate Halloween or like get really into it where, where you live. Where we live here, especially in our neighborhood, we tend to go, I don't want to say like all out, but there are certainly a lot of houses that decorate for Halloween and it's a pretty big fun neighborhood event. People come from a few neighborhoods over to come trick-or-treating in our neighborhood. It's a good time. This is the Carmine Red. We 
we usually do a thing called, um, not really what it's called, but where you put surprise like baskets and buckets and Halloween goodies on your neighbor's doorsteps and there's a little thing in there that says you've been booed. And um, there's a sign you put up on your door that says we've been booed and you put the other little baskets of treats and stuff for two more neighbors in the neighborhood. And whoever doesn't have a sign up has a chance of being booed. And it kind of goes along throughout the whole month of October and it's really a lot of fun to see when you drive through the neighborhood signs that say that I've been booed, you know, or, or see treat baskets on someone's door, doorstep, um, waiting for them to open their door and find a little surprise. It's pretty cute. The whole neighborhood gets into that. It's a lot of fun. And you don't have to, but it's fun to get into the spirit of it, of course. No pun intended. We have a few neighbors in our neighborhood that will set up outdoor movie screens and play Halloween movies. Like, there are a fair amount of small kids in our neighborhood, so nothing too scary. But like Peanuts, or The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, or Hocus Pocus, something along those lines. Um, out in their yard throughout the whole night, and some of them will grill out hot dogs to hand out to neighbors and that kind of thing. It's just really, it's a good time. one neighbor that will put his little um, ride along lawnmower and have a very small little hayride for kids. Cute. This one is the crimson red. This one's a little bit deeper, so I'm not going to do a whole lot with this one. my favorite time of year coming up though when the weather starts to cool off and there's a lot of like community events and things like that. In a couple of weeks the town, town or two over, is having a pretty big fall festival and that'll be fun. We plan on taking our little puppy up to that. I would take our older dog. Uh, but he gets really stressed out away from the house. He doesn't like leaving the house. We adopted him when he was three years old, and he is a homebody. And if he doesn't want to go out, I'm not going to force him to. He likes to be at home sleeping, as you can hear now. He's snoring. Um, but our puppy is little, and he loves people. Holy cow. He absolutely loves everybody. And it's good for him to get out, you know, and get that socialization. So if he wants to go out, I'm fine with that. If my older dog doesn't want to go out, I am fine with that. And let's do a little bit of this magenta. Let's see how this does. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to like this color that much, so I'm not going to do a lot of it. I mean, I like the color, but just not for her hair. Hey, you know? The color itself is very pretty, but it's not Ariel's hair color. As I proceed to color it in, like all the main pieces of her hair is colored. I might do that this other time too, this color. Okay, I'll leave that for that one. I'll really care for that. Uh, and this is the Crimson Lake. This is the darker color, isn't it? Huh? Okay, I'm 
few of these darker shades here. That's nice. Go back in with this. It's the poppy red. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. And just finish out these last few pieces here. There's one little bit there, I'm just gonna... Okay. And that's her hair done. So. Her shin is different shades of green, which I do have quite a few of, so that's good. True green. I have this I'm definitely gonna use. Light aqua. I have aquamarine. I have grass green. I might do a little bit of that. It's like a darker green. I want to keep it a lot more airy. Let's do a color swatch and see. I might do a little bit with that. This is peridot green. I don't know if I call that true green, but all right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> White aqua. Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. Okay. I think I might do these two, the true green and the white aqua for her seashells up here. And then the other four for her tail fin. Let's start with this aquamarine. I'm 
It's just going to curl, isn't it, this entire long curl? You know what would be interesting? I was leaving these parts right here blank. It might be interesting to go shake things up a little bit and color those in black. Hmm. That would be really interesting to do. I don't know. I definitely want to do something unexpected there. I was thinking purple, but we will play around with that and see what looks best. I think I'm going to color her whole fin in with these colors first on both sides and then see what color would work best as a little accent color there. I know we recently had a hurricane roll through here. Uh, so if you are involved in that at all or got any of the weather from that, I hope you're okay. We just had a lot of rain. It wasn't anything too, too terrible here, but it's to be expected around here this time of year. I know the season's not over yet for that, so there's always more.
the black in there, just very unexpected. I think you could do like a black on both sides of that to kind of tie it together. Obviously, that would be veering way off <laughs> from the animated version of her, but this is not the animated version of her, it's my version. So we will be holding true to some parts, but looks like going wildly off course for others. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. I'm sure some of y'all are screaming at me. <laughs> Don't do it. We'll see. We'll see when it's all colored in. There's a couple of parts I missed over on this side here. I'll have to go back and color in, but that's okay. Oh no, these are like the same color up here. Oh, a little bit different, okay. I don't know, one of my favorite color combos though is black and blue. They're so Contrasting together, it's nice. Whenever I play with my acrylic paints, those are two colors I always reach for together. So it's not surprising to me that I want to put black next to all these blues. <laughs> not surprising at all to me. It's so funny, you're sitting here thinking that you get, you're getting all of the pieces and parts colored in. <laughs> and I'm going to step back and be like, oh, 
I missed a whole section. How did that happen? Okay. I think I will. I think I will go with the bow. very deep, it's very dark, it's almost black, but it's still technically blue. See, there's more right there I missed. Right here and there. I'll go back and get those in a minute. I'm gonna like that. That's gonna look really nice, I think. I hope you agree with that decision. Let's do the indigo blue here. mentioned earlier, I'm not going to have the time, and I'm sure that you guys don't want to see me sit here and color this whole entire thing today, but I think we will color her seashells. We'll finish Ariel. Well, I don't know. I want to do some work on Scuttle. I don't know if we'll have time to finish all of Ariel, because her tail fin down here is extremely detailed, and around her hip flares here, I guess, I don't know what to call those. That's a lot of small little details, so I think what I'll do is finish this part of her, color in her skin tone, and her cups, and her, do her face. Oops, I missed that part of her hair too. And then color in, did I say scuttle? That's the bird. Sebastian. Um, and then call that done for today. because I'm sure y'all won't want to see her sit here and watch me just do the insane small little details of these. That's what I, I don't know, I like adult coloring books, and you know I love Disney, so I don't mind it too much, but my goodness. These tiny little details. I don't know, I may not even bother coloring those in. I might just do different shades of green for her tail and color those all in solid. I might just do that. And if that's the case, I'll do that here, but because I know I'm not gonna ever sit there and just color in each tiny little thing. <laughs> but now that I look at it, oh no, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see how I'm feeling. We will see how it goes, I'm, I, I don't know. As soon as I said that, I had a, something pop in my head that would be fun to do, so we'll see. this indigo blue. The black would have been nice too, but that would have been a very stark contrast, and this indigo blue stays in the blue family. Blue, green, blue. It's pretty. My goodness, I still missed a whole bunch. <laughs> Let's see. Go ahead and cover those in. 
That is so pretty. I like that a lot. I was going to do a watercolor painting today for this. I had a whole scene set up for um, Lady and the Tramp, which is one of my personal favorite Disney movies. Um, I mean, as you can probably guess by now, I'm a big fan of dogs, <laughs> animals in general, but doggos. Alright, so I have my same colors up here. That's fine. I think I off camera I am. Some apple green for this side. Let's see if I'm right. saying parrot though it's parrot green my goodness you guys this cold has been kicking my behind this is the grass green I think it was grass green for this side yeah there we go oh my <laughs> good grief all right there we go so that's done I'm gonna set these colors off to the side I made, like I said before, I may just do these four colors and just color a little tail on there. And then use these colors to do right up here. Because I think that's just what I'm going to do with her she seashells, is just do the giant swaths. Instead of coloring every little bit here. don't feel like doing each individual little piece a different color. And it will look fine. And then the pattern will just be a pattern on the color. Oh, that's more for hair there, but it's okay. Boom, done. I think that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Missed the little piece right there. Okay, we'll get to it. Now, I think that's all we'll do. <laughs> you know, I think I want to do this tail. I'll go ahead and finish that fin up. I think I'm just going to do the same thing, just do the swoops of color here.
good heavens. Oops, no, it's the wrong pointer, I think, sorry. <laughs> oh, mercy. It's grass growing. You never know what's going to happen around here. It's never a dull moment. That is for sure. Carrot green. Grass green. Is that the last one? Yeah, I guess it is, right? I'm glad we did that. Thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, let's finish her hair out in those few little pieces that I've missed. Carmine red. And under her arm here. And let's see if we can find the poppy. Let's do her roots with the poppy red too. Okay, and I think I think she had blue eyes. So let's look at. Peacock blue color. That would be nice. Let's do that for her eyes here. That is a blue eyeball. Or iris, anyway. Um, this is the color sand. <laughs> that might be just that's the color I'm looking for. I know for some reason there's been a lot of controversy controversy about the recasting of the little mermaid at her skin tone. Frankly, I don't care. Um, she can be whatever color, you know, but I'm trying to somewhat stick to the animated version of their color palette. But that's the great thing about doing this at home. You can have her be whatever skin tone you want her to be. You want her to be a darker skin tone, she'll be beautiful. You want her to be a pink skin tone, she'll be beautiful. You want her to be a blue skin tone, that would be amazing, you know? All skin tones are beautiful, and I'm glad that all skin tones are being represented now. That is awesome. Each one of us is unique, and there is not a mistake amongst us, so. I am here for it.
switch my eyes. I hope you do too. Uh, so, I think Sebastian is going to have a lot of the same coloring as Ariel does. I might bring in some of this more peachy tone. It's pale vermilion. same colors as her hair, only that would tie those in nicely. Maybe to another color from her hair, let's see. It's carmine red. And I like to use several different colors, usually at least three on these kinds of coloring books per character because nature does not have one flat color for most things. This is the orange. This is the pale vermilion. Maybe we get a color palette to make sense for our character. That's really nice. This is the poppy red. I like these three colors together with a maybe a hint of the orange. Because I mean realistically, once a crab is cooked, then they turn red. <laughs> when they're in the water, they're usually like a blue. Um, but, you know, again, we're trying to st I'm trying to stick with the color palette from the movie. And in the movie, even underwater, he was red, so... Okay. I will roll with it. I guess I can kind of see why Disney did that, because like, like they drew or animated a crab that was blue underwater. People, I think, would be very confused, because they're used to seeing crabs with red, and so you usually see them cooked. And it's also entirely possible that I am completely wrong. If I am, please feel free to correct me. I know there's a lot of different types of crab, and there are a lot of different colorings, so... Maybe the type of crab that Sebastian is is red underwater. That is entirely possible. I have no problem admitting that I'm wrong about something. By the way, it's the poppy red color. the majority of the rest of this in this color and have little hints of the orange because there's not a lot of orange in him but it would be nice oops, to break up all that red groan in his sleep.
honest about this orange, but do a little bit and see how it goes. as bad as I think it's going to be. That's good. I'm going to do these last little bits in this pale vermilion color. His baton, and that will be Sebastian Dunn. So interestingly, I'll go with this in red. I didn't want to want to go that gray. His baton, you know, it does have to be brown. I was thinking black for me. going to do one color. This is burnt ochre. Kind of a yellow to brown. I think that'll be nice. There's a little bit of red in the burnt ochre. Red tones. this for today. I am really happy with how this all turned out. And I <laughs> apologize. I'm, I'm hopefully we'll be able to edit this so that it won't be as jumbled as it actually was in person because man, this, this is all over the place. But I appreciate you being here. I appreciate everyone, like I said earlier, who has subscribed and liked and commented. It really does go such a long way. Um, and I sincerely apologize for my voice. Hopefully, by the next video, things will be back to normal. <laughs> Whatever normal is, but you get the idea. Um, so again, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you soon.